All right, first off, yes, my name is Zachary Taylor. No, I am not related to the 12th president of the United States, Zachary Taylor. Uh, fun facts about Zachary Taylor, not me. The dude on the screen, the black and white photos. Um, Zachary Taylor never registered to vote. He didn't even vote in his own election. He was cousin to Robert E. Lee and his son-in-law is Jefferson Davis. Future president of the Confederate States of America. So, Zachary Taylor, 12th president of America. He was president from March 4th, 1849 to July 9th, 1850. See, President Zachary Taylor left the nation with a pretty interesting legacy upon his very early death. He's the second president to die in office, the first being the ninth president, William Henry Harrison. Taylor was a war hero with a successful record equaling that of Andrew Jackson or even George Washington himself, with such glory having been won in battle against many different Native American tribes and most notably against Santa Ana in the Mexican-American War, the ability to say his name along with Washington and Jackson made the Louisiana native Taylor an attractive candidate to Northerners. The fact that Taylor owned about 100 slaves made him an attractive candidate to Southerners. Taylor himself never actually wanted to become president. However, the 1848 presidential election came at a time of extreme sectional tensions. After a lot of pressure, the Whigs convinced Taylor to reluctantly run for presidency, which he actually won. Uh, Taylor held the office of the president only for a short while. While he was president, however, he managed to surprise many with his policies. He believed Whig policies of reviving a national bank was pointless and that increasing taxes, something that the Whigs also wanted, would only increase sectional tensions. If there was anything he did care about as president, it would be solving the country's growing sectional divide. When the South threatened him with secession, he responded that persons, and this is a quote, taken in rebellion in the, against the Union, he would hang with less reluctance than he had hanged deserters and spies in Mexico. Basically, this Southern slave-owning president would not allow secession, even over slavery. Then events took an unexpected turn. This president, who was liked by the North because of his economic policies, and liked by the South because he's a Southern slave owner, possibly the last president to have a real shot at truly solving the sectional problems that lead to the American Civil War. He dies. So after eating and drinking fruit and iced milk on a blisteringly hot July 4th, he had given a speech and afterwards he went to refresh himself in a tent. Taylor fell ill and within five days he was dead. See, they didn't have refrigeration back then, so they just had some sugared strawberries and uh, some chilled milk, but they didn't have proper ice, and it just kind of sat out there. And it was it was cold because they kept it in the shade and everything, but bacteria, dude, they didn't know about that stuff. Uh, they actually exhumed him at one point. They thought that he might have been poisoned, and if he had been poisoned, that would make him the first assassinated president, not Abraham Lincoln. And when they pulled him out, they tested his hair and they thought it might be arsenic. And they did find arsenic in his hair. However, everybody has a tiny bit, like minuscule in their hair. And burial procedures back then were not very good. So his body was not in a very good condition. It had degraded a lot. So the hair, they, they couldn't really get really good readings. So while they did find arsenic and possible he was poisoned it's really unlikely uh, the painting on the right is a depiction of his death after his death the forces of compromise triumphed and the war taylor had been willing to face 
comes 11 years later. How different would it be if the Civil War had happened earlier? Taylor had been president. What if you didn't have a northern abolitionist, arguably, as president, but rather a southern slave owner during the Civil War? Makes you think. I hope you're learning and I hope you're having fun.